Welcome to the Peterson's Bow Hunting Podcast. All bow hunting, all the time. Now, here's your host, editor Christian Berg. All right, welcome back to the Bow Hunting Podcast. We are all bow hunting all the time. And as you can see, we are live in person for today's recording. I got my buddy. Jace Bowserman from uh, Colorado. Jace, you have been super generous in opening up your home to us. We've been chasing some turkeys here with uh, our good friend, Clint Casper, a frequent bow hunting contributor and all around uh, man about town. So, man about town. Like gentlemen, it. welcome like to it. the show. And, uh, you know, based right here in Jace's. The, the, the J- based with Jace Bowserman's uh, trophy collection. And this, by the way, folks, he was concerned like, oh, you're only showing the small ones. Why don't we shoot small ones? This is, this is just <laughs> but a fraction. Like, you've got an extensive pronghorn collection yeah, ten, over here. Really you nice got pronghorn there's box, elk and bunch of mule elk. deer and more whitetails over here. And then, yeah. oh, good grief. Yeah, yeah you are. I'm showing machine. my favorite part of the whole room, and that's the, 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 the three muley bucks over here, but it's Absolutely. Fine. Absolutely. I don't care about these white tails. Well, listen, let's let's dive right into it because people are hungry. People They're ready. They hunger oh, and thirst for information. For, for information. And you know, today, uh, Clint, you actually wrote an article that's mm-hmm. going to be in the uh, July, July issue. issue. And great, great uh, July is while public land. Public land. Okay, so. Uh, if people and Jace has an article in there as well about public access programs, were yep. state programs that actually make private land available, yeah. and we can maybe talk about that a little bit yep. as well. But uh, make sure to pick up your copy of the July issue. Same with shameless plug, but it, I mean, if you like public land hunting, you, you definitely want to have that. You should just be subscribed, is what you should do mm. for a very low cost and come right to your door. <laughs> You know, I, I, I mean, it's a good idea. It's, it's not a bad thing. Ten, ten bucks a, a year. Idea. Ten bucks or a year. Or you're going to pay four or five dollars for an issue. You pay ten for the whole year. It's a no-brainer. Six. Six bucks you're for the issue. Six bucks. So <laughs> yeah, no, you really I mean, for the, for less than the cost. For another of one, two dollars of that, you can go buy a sever. So realistically, think about it. You're yes. buying. There's a, there's a like shameless it. plug for that's, sever. That's there you go. You guys are welcome. Wow. Sever doesn't even sponsor this show. Maybe somebody. <laughs> if anyone from Sever is listening. Um, no, we will take your check. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you my address at the end of the show. Yeah. Is this going to be like 60 minutes of ad lib comedy? We can do or, it. Or can we get we into the Let's go. People like entertainment. Public land. All right. Public land. Public, Public, land. Public etiquette. land etiquette. Because Clint, I, I, you know, you wrote this story. Mm-hmm. Really turned out well. I'm taking all the credit because I... I suggested the topic to you, but I want to do a story about public land etiquette because guys, right? Public land hunting, it's all the rage these days, right? It is. More and more people with this ever since, you know, not since the pandemic, before the pandemic, it was super popular, but but the pandemic exacerbated it, right? Oh yeah, because we brought a lot more participants or maybe some people who who have been bow hunters for a long time just had more time yeah. to get out there. Yeah. So yeah. everyone has, you know, seen an increase in crowds and, and people love to, to bitch and moan about, you know, all the people out there. Yep. And, then, and then you've got other things. Actually, another story in this issue uh, that I asked Will Brantley to do is just about how like Onyx and Hunt Stand and all these. Oh, yeah. They like, made there, it. there used to be a time when you had like a secret spot, Jason. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no those, such, there's no, no, no such thing, thing, man. And it's it's gotten crazy. It's gotten crazy, like how easy it is to, I mean, if you do your research, if you put in your time, if you just say, okay, I'm going to dedicate myself to putting in the time oh, and yeah. doing the research, the information is out there between Onyx, between Hunt Stand, Google Earth, Google Earth, and then you've got the state game and fish websites that are really beefing up like their information, their yeah. mapping systems, oh, yeah. you know, going on and reading articles about what they think, hunt planners, things like that. There's a lot of information out there if you take your Go time. Hunt. Yeah. Yep, you yeah. can you so, can get it quick. So it's great. I mean, you know, like the premise of the article is like on the one hand, all that information democratizes hunting because sure. it kind of puts us all on an equal playing field. Mm-hmm. And you know, you'd think, okay, well, that's great. Until you actually get out there and you're like, oh man, yeah. now if like you know, a fat guy like me can sit in Pennsylvania on my couch and find like that water hole. 
that's eight miles from the trailhead, yeah. guess what? So can every other fat guy on his couch, you know, in, in sure. Ohio and in Colorado yeah. and everywhere in between. And so it's like, oh my goodness, you know, anyway, we're getting on a, a rabbit trail there too. We're, there's a lot. That we there's a lot to talk about with this. But, but public land etiquette, um, gosh, it just seems like with more people out there and all this going on, we just need to be mindful of this and you guys are both pretty serious public land hunters. Um, spend a lot of time on public land each year. And, 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 you know, it's like you said, Clint, and I'll throw it to you to kind of get the conversation started where, you know, you basically are like, hey, based on what I'm seeing out there, public land etiquette is basically a lost art. It's a lost art. It really is. And it's not even just a, a big buck or a big bull that, that, that creates turmoil. It's ownership. That's my spot. What are you doing mm -hmm. here? I, I mean, I see it every year. I mean, oh, I camp there. What, why are you camping here? Who, who are you? It, you know, and it's like, well, this is, uh, I'm Clint from Ohio. I, I don't, I didn't know this was your spot, you know, and I'm here first, you, you know, but it's like an ownership. I see ownership yeah. on public land. Yeah. You know? yeah. On private, back home, like I share some pieces with people and I kind of know, hey, they hunt over here yep. and I hunt over yep. here. And we just don't really cross because. And it is that. It, it's it different. That. Yes. On public land though, it's. It is not, it's public land, you know, if yeah. someone beats me to my spot and I want to camp there and I've done this 1 a.m. I get to a spot. I'm like, ha, ah, dead tired. I'm, I'm basically sleeping on my trekking poles, getting up there. And I'm like, oh, shit, there's a <laughs> camp. I'm going to get on Onyx and figure out where I'm going because I'm not just going to, I got beat. Mm -hmm. It is it's part of the game. It's part of the gig. Yeah. I mean, and I might have to hike three more hours. It might be done. Now it's 4 a.m. till I get camp set up and Just now it's time to, to hunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, but in my mind, well, hey, yeah, I got beat here and, and he's here first. I'm not going to ruin his, you know, I'm not going to camp right beside the guy, hunt right beside the guy. Well, you know. you know, in a lot of ways, Jace, I think we've seen over the last 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. I think we've seen a coarsening of society as a whole. Yeah. You know, uh, people are more abrasive. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we, you look at the political climate in our country, the rate, <laughs> the racial climate in our country, like everyone's divided. Everyone's choosing sides. Everyone is looking out for number one. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we see that spill over into bow hunting. And so, you know, before we dive deeper, maybe we should back up and just be like, you know, what is public land etiquette and and what kind of a mindset you know, do you have when you go out there, Jace, because you, you're here in Colorado. Yep. There's a lot of public land around. Yep. You hunt turkeys on the public. You know, we, we were out all, you know, a good while yesterday, deep in some public yep. land. Um, you hunt antelope on the public, elk on the public, whitetails on the public, yep. mule deer on the public. Yep. Last year, sheep on the public. So you really have right. a, a lot of experience out yeah. there. And when you go out, you pretty well expect to see other people, right? Oh yeah, definitely. I think, I think, uh, you know, yesterday in that spot, because it was for turkeys probably is why right. we didn't see. And a Sunday. Well, yeah. And a Sunday, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see other people, but I would say 90% of the time, yeah, you're going to bump into other people. And like, for me, I've always just gone back to like the golden rule is just treat others the way you I would like to yep. be treated. Yeah. And it is frustrating sometimes. And I've been, mm -hmm. I've been frustrated. I mean, I've been where I'm like, gosh, dang it, man. You know, I mean, you think you've got something really figured out and you show up and it's like, you it's just, your go. heart just sinks oh, yeah. because you're just like, yep. and it's over and you know, but, but on my end of the coin, I look at that and I'm like, same, same way you just said it. Part of the game. It's just, it is what it is now. Yep. I mean, because the last thing I'm going to do is try to now disrupt that guy's hunt. Right. Because I think what we have to remember too is Clint wants it really bad. You want it really bad. When you're out there, I want it really bad. Yeah. You know, I'm out there to win. I mean, I relate a lot to sports. Is yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm out there to win. I want yeah. to win. But so does the guy that's out there that you look at as competition or however you look. They want to win too. They want to win too. Yep. Right. They want, and they're out there too. And they're, 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 they, you know, they've done their work and they want to do it. So, I just go back to the the golden rule I came in with. If I was, if the roles were reversed, would I want that guy coming yeah. ripping off a bugle right next to me when he sees me standing right here? I've been here. I'm put, I, or you know, vice versa. It just well, that's really what it boils down to. Let's let's like really rubber meets the road. Though. 
Yeah. Okay. Last year you drew your bighorn sheep tag. And that was interesting with once in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. And you were telling me last night, you actually, you spent 19 days mm -hmm. with, and, and most of that was before the season actually opened, right? Yeah. Uh, 16 total, except or 14 days or something like that. Okay. Before. So you, you were basically in the field for two weeks yep. before the season, like yep. finding this group of rams. Yeah patterning them, yeah. watching them. Yes. You talk about putting in the work. So now what if I had a tag too, but I didn't yep. do any of that. What if I showed up on opening morning and you're like, I've already got two weeks in, you know, these are quote, it this happened. is my band. It did. It happened. So tell me what <laughs> happened and how do you deal so, with yeah, it? So that, yeah, that's why I would like, so in my unit, that, that, that unit gives three archery tags. Mm -hmm. It gives three archery tags in that, in that particular unit. And, you know, when you draw a bighorn sheep tag, you know, you know, it's pretty much once in a lifetime. And so people that have hunted those units before, they're not shy about telling you, you know, like, hey, man, oh, yeah, they're, they want to help you. Like, because right, right. they, they, the chances of them ever getting that right, tag yeah, again yeah. is slim to none. Right. I may get it again, but I'll be 70. I don't know. And those guys don't realize know. what that tag means. They yeah. do. They put in for it. They put it. And so for me, it was like, man, I was, I was really amped to put in all the work, do everything, you know, get everything done. And I met the, the, what I would call the second tag holder. Cause that's how we kind of related to each other up there. Like I met the second tag holder while I was scouting and that was like a week before. And we introduced, we introduced ourselves. We sat down, we talked, we actually ended up glassing together for like three days mm -hmm. because we've talked about it. Like, like, Hey man, I probably know what you know. And you probably know what yeah. I know. May as well you you look at the same maps. Let's get on the same page. Yep. Help and other. help each other. Right. And, 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 and he didn't have, I mean, to my benefit, I had a team there and I'm not going to say I didn't. I, I had a team of guys there that were took time out of their schedules, their lives to help me achieve a goal. So I had a team of glassers, which is huge. He had a few, he had a few guys off and on. So we just decided, Hey, we're going to help each other. Mm -hmm. Well, the night before the hunt starts, we met the third tag holder who did not put in much scouting, if any, mm -hmm. and kind of came up and was like, hey, wh wh where are they at? What are you guys doing? And you're wanting, and Mike just kind of looked at me and I just kind of looked at Mike. And that was one of those that was really hard because it was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to really at this point. Oh yeah. yeah. I wouldn't expect though, treat yeah. others how you would like to be treated. I would not expect you would for, for him to go, him. hey man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's everything I know. We were just kind of like, well, man, we're, <laughs> yep. we're here, we're there, we're there, well, you know, I mean, on, just, and being on public land, I mean, kind of the whole deal on public is, is, you know, Hey, everyone's entitled to, here's this one big ram. Yeah. Anyone can go hunting. Yeah. But you don't have to help or share info. Right. You know, you don't want to go purposely blow a ram out. Oh, right. I don't want that guy to get it. So I'm going to go blow it out. Right. But you also don't need to go tell that guy. 14 days worth of information when that you you've gathered there's no you know yeah in my mind i'm like yeah. hey man not you know not being mean but yeah buddy you're kind of asking me for hey can you pay me a paycheck but you haven't done any work like yeah that's not really how it works and like the other guy said you know like he we were sitting there talking and, and that guy just kind of got i think he kind of got the message and he just kind of you know and he's like dude i he's like you're way nicer than me he's like it he's like i didn't it's like, I was almost to the point where you have a tag like that and you're, you're showing up yeah. the day before and just hoping and someone tells just you, hope, you know, you, you didn't do your due diligence. So right. now it's like kind of you know, man, that you're behind the eight ball. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. You're but, on your own, but you put yourself there. Right. It was one of because those like, I'm sorry that I'm not sorry. Five in that days instance. before the hunt and talks to you guys and helps different. or just like through another area. And Hey, you guys go here. I'll go check this. Let's yeah. all share. That's yep. different. Now you're at a whole yep. different game. Yep. Cause I've done this with buddies before, you know, we all hunt some public for whitetails or even some private pieces, you know, sure. I'll run cameras over here. He runs cameras over there. Production yep. runs cameras over here. We all figure out, like, hey, there's there's no bucks over here, but there's four good shooters on this side. Let's all hunt. Yeah, I'm all I'm good with yep. that. You know, and what was cool is like Mike and I, because up there, you know, you're in the higher country. You got cell service. Oh, yeah. And yep. so Mike and I at night, if some days you'd see each other and some days you you right. wouldn't see each other, you Still know, just, communicate with but we would let each other know, like what happened and like, hey, man, I'm thinking about going to X tomorrow. What's your plan? Nope. We're going to be. 
Okay. You know, over here, but I'll check in with you later. Yep. And we got to be really, really good friends through, cool. through the whole process. Like cool. friends where it's like, hey, man, if you draw this tag up here. Did he end up killing around? He did not. Any um, shots or anything? He missed. Oh, um, he missed. He, he had his opportunity and he missed. And he he did, to, to his credit, I mean, he he did pass. Uh, I know he passed uh, a half a legal ram that mm -hmm. he just, you know, it's not what he Yep. Like he said, that's not why I drew the tag. Right, I yep. wanted something, yep. you know, that unit's known for big bases and that's yep. what you go there for. And that's what he wanted. He did, he did not end up killing his sheep, but he had a great experience. And, and I think he got solid to spend, opportunity though. He got a solid. Oh, opinion. absolutely. Oh, he, gosh. I think he hit the only limb oh, on a so. dead tree that, and, and. That breaks my heart. Um, it really did. I, I mean, it, I don't even know the guy, but I yeah. want that tag. That's my number one animal Dude. on Clint's list is a big horn. But he handled it. He was such a, he was a classy dude. That's, I mean, he just handled cool. it with grace and he handled it with like, hey man, the experience was, yeah. well, you have you to, know, you have to. Yeah. I mean, if you're you on sheep every day, if you miss, you, I, yeah. I, and all you just <laughs> want on a hunt like that is, I always say when I go on a hunt, I want to bend my limbs back one time. Yep. And if I get to do that, mm -hmm. it's now all on me. Yeah. And sometimes you execute a perfect shot and you do hit that one limb or the animal moves yep. or ducks and that's out of your control. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's hard to accept in the moment, but that was just the plan from the man upstairs. Yeah, you live to fight another day. You, you just weren't meant, <laughs> you know, you just weren't meant to kill that ram. I mean, yeah, I, I'm curious about the third guy. Did he get a sheep? He shot yeah. three. He, he shot, did. He shot, he shot three. a sheep on the last day of the hunt. No way. Wow. See, I've never asked you how long is I've never season. asked you about the third guy. Yep. Oh, you got to tell the story. 30 days. So the season starts, well, 31. So it starts August 1st and goes to how many days in August? 31 or 31. 30? Um, so he did all his homework in season. He did. And he killed it on the, on the very last day of the season. Good Ram. Um, mm, average Ram for legal? that unit, but legal, legal Ram, average Ram, legal Ram for that unit. I was, I was happy. I was happy for him too. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike and I talked about it. Cause I think it was Mike that ended up cause Mike was up there longer than me after, you know, he was still hunting a yeah. lot. And so I don't think they ever shared a whole lot of information, but they exchanged, you know, like, hey, man, you know, you've been well, up here and see, a while now. And I think he text on the flip side. I'm just running this through my brain. Now, see, that goes to show a guy who come up there and was looking for a pot of gold. Yeah. That he shouldn't have been looking for. Yeah. And then had to put in the work. Yeah. And look, he got rewarded. Yeah. He got rewarded. He had his opportunity. He made the most of it. He kills a ram. He kills a ram. Now, now that's how it should be, because yeah. he could have gotten pissed off. Yeah. And, and then played. You know what? Screw those guys. Yep. If they're not going to let me on their team, mm -hmm. then by God, I, I'm just going to blow their stuff. And but he didn't. Never you know? once. And, 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 and that's never how once and that's how it should comments. be. So that that's that's yeah. that's how public land hunting should be. If a guy right. doesn't want to share info, or you can just get the feeling of, hey, yeah, I'm not really welcome here. They've been here. This is kind of their area. Yep. You just go find another, and that's how it should be. Yep. And he got rewarded. Yep. He but you know what's funny though? He had to put in the work. He did. See, he, he did. It was the last, last day. day. It was the and last day. I'm sure day. he hunted a few days and did. And, I'm and pretty sure he started putting in quite a bit of work because he, I think once you, once he saw. That's him, honestly a really cool story. Yeah. It, that, it was, it was, it was, the whole process was really yeah. neat. Because you, you come up there kind of hoping, I'm sure, oh man, I sure hope tag one guy and tag two are going to let me in. And he was by, he knew he was behind the eight ball. And then he, he realized, out. well, <laughs> now it's all on me. Yeah. I got to figure it out. So that's really cool. Last day, a lot of pressure. That's a big shot. Like, nice show. Once in a lifetime Ram, last day, you know he's had to put in a bunch of work. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have already had opportunities and you you killed mm -hmm. a, a mega up there. Yep. So I mean that's a you know, that's a fourth fourth quarter. It is it's gotta throw a touchdown. It is it's a left. Clint Casper. Oh man, I don't know about all that. <laughs> all right. So so that that's sheep, okay, which is yeah, that's, most of us can't relate to that yeah. because I'm most going people, to one day. Right. I'm but going but to most day. people are never going to even draw that tag. Totally. And, and mm -hmm. you know, most people are also never going to be a situation where there's only like three people in a given right. unit Agreed. who have a tag. Okay, let's let's, let's let's take the same sort of scenario, but parallel mm -hmm. it to something that we can all relate to a little bit more. Like but, elk. Yeah, exactly where I'm going. Oh, especially man. here in Colorado. Because it's most of the state mm -hmm. is over the count. Mm -hmm. yep. Majority of you. Yep. It's close to 70% of our... Yep. Yeah, is, is, is OTC. So, you know, and this is something where, you know, I, I've done, you know, DIY all kind of here. Um, you you kind of had the mentality, right? I mean, if you, the undertone of like all what you guys were talking about is like, hey, we're all in the same boat kind of mm -hmm. thing. 
And it's easy to say that when there's only three of you in the mm-hmm. whole unit, mm-hmm. but now there's 3,000 of you, mm-hmm. literally. Like, mm-hmm. man, when we, we hunted, you know, uh, up in the Route National Forest, um, there's camps everywhere and there's guys everywhere and we were seeing more people every uh-huh. day. Uh-huh. But but still, you mentioned another thing. You and Mike got to be like good oh, friends. Yeah. Okay, when it was me and, and three of my buddies from Pennsylvania and we went out there, the first day, it was my buddy Tori and I, we were out in the field. We were about five or six miles from the trailhead and it was midday. We were up on like this rocky outcropping like overlooking this beautiful valley. There was like a lake down below us. We were just resting, having lunch, taking a little nap. We're laying there in the sun and we hear like some rocks, you know, yeah. moving behind us. Yep. And so we could get up and turn around and here's this guy. And it turns out like, you know, it's another elk hunter and mm-hmm. we start to strike up conversation. It's this guy named Barry Rogast. Okay, Barry, if you're watching I'm gonna the show. you. I'm going to humor you, know, you real quick. You know Barry? No, but I read the article. Oh, okay. And Barry was in the article. So, so, <laughs> so uh, I'm surprised you remember it because this was years ago. So, but Barry, few. Barry was, I mean, you know, Barry was quite a bit older than us. Barry was probably in his sixties and, uh, you know, but he's a high school biology teacher from Kansas and he was out there. He was actually parked at the same trailhead where yep. we had come in and he was sleeping in his truck. And uh, truck camping and, and in there. And, Mind um, it. you know, Tori and I and some other guys, we were staying at this cabin they call it a cabin. It's really like, like a nice vacation home. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a, somebody's, um, it was a family that's into like snowmobiling and stuff. And then they, and so just, they had, they, during the elk season, they would rent it out to hunters. Oh, so it's like an Airbnb. Airbnb. Exactly. It's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it could sleep like, I think it slept like nine people. So okay. there were four of us in our group and there was uh, some guys from California that were staying there that week. And there was two guys, uh, Mike and Jamin Brower from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So there was three groups basically in there, but everyone was just off hunting during the mm-hmm. day. And then at night, you know, we'd be there. So anyway, we were talking to, to Barry, you know, just talking about the hunt, blah, blah, blah. I had a nice visit. And we told him, we're like, we're staying at this cabin down the road. Right. If, if you need anything, like even if like, you know, if you just get too cold, if you need a shower, come by for a hot shower or come by and just have dinner with us. One yeah. Night kind of thing. Well, so that was it, you know, so we hunted the rest of the day and, and we get, you know, home that night and, and we're back at the cabin, you know, hang out for a while, go to bed. We get up the next morning to get ready to go hunting. And I come down the stairs into the living room and Barry is asleep on the couch in the living room. <laughs> I said, hey, said, hey, Tori, he didn't wait too long, you know, to take us right home. home, He's making himself right at home, you know. So Barry wakes up, you know, and he's like, he gets up and he's like, I shot a bull. Mm -hmm. He's like, after we left that morning, that afternoon, he went into the dark timber on Mm -hmm. the side of this ridge that we were hunting. And he. North facing. Mm Yeah. And he, he. Good play. He got on a bull, put a good shot on this thing and killed it. It was towards the end of the day. And then it was just him out there with the bull. Right. And by the time he basically got that thing quartered, got all the meat hung oh, and wow. hiked back out to the trailhead, mm-hmm. it was like, I think he said it was like two or three in the morning mm-hmm. when he got to the cabin. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> and Typical so, day. <laughs> and so, and so Barry's there. Well, here, Mike and Jamin, they had drawn, we were hunting a, a, an OTC unit. Unit 12 is right is, on the other side of the road. That's a draw. Mm-hmm. They're horse guys and they didn't bring their own horses from Louisiana, but they rented some horses. Yep. So they had driven up from Louisiana, rented some horses, put them in their trailer and they had brought them because there's also a corral at this cabin. Mm -hmm. They had already gone in and Mike, that was the dad, Mike had killed already. And they had actually, they weren't there the first few days we were there, but then they showed up and they came back out. Mm -hmm. And so they, they were already tagged out. But they were just hanging out because they didn't want to go home early because it was like their hunting vacation. Yeah. They were having a good time. Yeah. They were hanging they out with us at the cabin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so so here now, Barry, Barry's never met them before. You know, he only knows Tori and I. So so it turns out to this whole thing. Well, now, you know, those guys get up and it's like, hey, he, this, here's this guy from Kansas. He's got a bull down like six miles in and it only would have himself. To, right, to, to get it out, it out. Yeah. and and Mike and and and, and Jamin are like, this is awesome, man. Yeah. We're, we're going to get our horses. We'll go get your bull today. Because that's and, the right attitude. Yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't have you know really anything, but they, but they love it anyway. Yeah. Because here's this guy. So so they got their horses and like 
you know, the three of them went in that day and they packed out, you know, his bowl and it was awesome. And then like everybody there at the cabin, I mean, the moral of the story is everybody got to be friends mm -hmm. and all of us stay in touch mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, I never even, you know, got anything. None of my group got anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think the guys from California got anything. Mm -hmm. So like one guy who was staying at the cabin and then another guy who wasn't even anything to do with the cabin, but just kind of like, yeah, we just invited him into our group. And, and I mean, he's an awesome bow hunter. It turns out like Barry was, I think he was president or vice president of Kansas bow hunters association at that time. I don't mm -hmm. know if he still is, but you know, just a great group of guys. And I mean, that is what public land hunting can be about because if you look at the odds of success for any public land hunt as a bow hunter, it's not in your favor. Not so even, no, in, not close. instead of being like bitter about the fact that you didn't get anything, mm -hmm. you celebrate somebody mm -hmm. else's success. And, and it's kind of like, we had some success because he had some success. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's Everyone true. got to share in, in a moment. It's true. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of, one of my very best friends, I mean, if I get married, he'd be in the wedding and he's been in the publication, Devin Leonard. I mean, I met him literally on a glassing knob looking for a giant mule deer buck that we just both happened to know about and be hunting. And that's Devin and I met, started BSing, needed a phone charger. I wanted some coffee. We exchanged. Next thing I know, we've been hunting buds for the last six years. Yeah. I mean, we, we hunt up together everywhere. Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Idaho, yep, Ohio, you know. And it's literally a, a public land. And we were in the same spot looking for the same buck. And, and a big deer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And a big deer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 200-inch buck. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and Meg, the thing is, is both of you, that could have went a different way. Oh, 100%. We put a plan together on, okay, well, he comes out in, plan, in spot yep. A or spot B. Let's, let's hunt together. And then in, in the last two hours, we'll flip a coin. Someone's going to A. Yep. The other guy's going to B. That's what we did. Exchange numbers and we literally we talk five times a week now. I yeah. mean best best friends. Yeah. And see that's that's he's that's he's, the way he's it Uncle be. Devin to my kids and I'm yeah. Uncle Clint to his. I mean that's literally how close you know, and it all started with but that could have went south. Easy. I mean, I've been in I've been on glass and mobs <laughs> and met a guy and immediately it's it's confrontational. Bet you're looking for the big bull I am, and I'm like, oh boy, here, here we go. go. Here we go. And, and it, it's a and it's a standoff deal yeah. from the rip. You know? I always like where they ask you where you're from. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah, because if you're not from the right place, you have no oh yeah, right. Certain to states like in see... Colorado, probably I don't know if it gets a bad rap for that. I don't know. I mean, like public land elk hunting in Colorado. I mean, you know, but like, I think the tech like Texas people get a terrible rap. Like every guy that I've run into, oh yeah, on public land that's been from Texas has been awesome. Mm -hmm. I've not had it. I mean, like, but I, I I've reciprocated that mm -hmm. to them, you know. But I mean. It, it goes back to like, it, it's crazy how, I don't know. It's, well, it's, it's crazy. It all comes down to, you know, it's funny. We, we, you know, we, we both have teenagers. Your kids are a little younger. Yeah. But <clears throat> Timmy was talking the other night about somebody was saying like, well, you know, I'm only going to give respect to somebody who gives me respect. Right. And I'm like, well, okay. If everyone had that attitude, I'm like, where does it start? Yeah. Who, right. Who, who's who is someone's got to be the yeah. person yeah. to yeah. give? Who's got to be the giver? Yeah. Before you <laughs> give <her> somebody, <laughs> you got to be the giver. The giver. Gracious. Yeah. So that's like literally. Yeah. So you know, there's too much like sub teenage lack of maturity mm -hmm. out there on public land, yep. Yep. and we see what happens. You know, Clint, you interviewed um, an acquaintance of yours who's a, actually a warden here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And he shared some like stupid stories about. Oh, I mean, guys blocking off yep. roads and team Putting of up. team teams of glassing guys who just all, somehow their truck ended up sideways with a flat tire. Yeah. We got to close the road down. Sorry, you guys can't get up today. We're coming with a you know the spares on the way, and it, it just be yep. uh, you know I mean just BS. Yeah. Guys getting in fist fights on the mountain over this is my glassing spot. That no, it's mine. No, I mean. Yeah, And I've, I hunt, I'm not going to say the unit, but I've talked about it before. I hunt a very highly, the, the most highly pressured unit in the country for, for, for <laughs> mule deer. There is no unit that gets more pressure and gives out more tags for elk and mule deer than this spot. Because it's close to a big city. It's close. It's <laughs> yes. And it's, and it's world renowned. I mean, 200 inch bucks and there's a lot of good bulls. 
but an, a normal day for me is 15 to 20 people. Different people that I will run into or see, or the most I've ever had is uh, 23 in one day. And all elk hunters, while I was elk hunting, you, you just have to hunt those animals differently. And, yeah. it's, and, and that's, and you, and you have to just know in your head, okay, I'm going to run into people. That's the, that's and the thing. And you can't let it, you know, you can't let that mentality be like the the piss in your Cheerios and mm -hmm. it just ruins your whole trip or ruins yeah. your day. Because if you think you're going to go out there and find a secret spot, there is no such thing. Yeah. There, 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 it's... You got hikers, you got <laughs> bikers, and you got people bird watching, and then you've got hunters. It's, it's, you're, there is no spot over there that's a gem or a yeah. secret. And, you, and if you think there is, you're already setting yourself up for failure because there's not. So we, I've wrote a lot of articles over the years about going into public land with realistic expectations. Oh. So realistic expectations in terms of that is a realistic public land bull in Colorado. Absolutely. Right there. That's a realistic public land bull in Colorado Absolutely. in an OTC unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm hmm having realistic expectations about the amount of bugling you may or may not hear. It's not going to be a Primo's video in most, most, no. most, most instances, but I don't think we heard five bugles. on. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, that's, we, that's, we heard, that's, like, that's, that's we heard cool. three in the dark. Yeah. I've had yeah. guys swear to me, like you meet them on the trail and they're like, Oh, do they like, do you they gotta really tell bugle? me, dude, do they really, do bugle? they really bugle and do they, you know, they're joking. Yeah. Like, is it a unicorn? But yeah. you, I think you have to prepare yourself the same way, you know, you say, hey, prepare yourself physically to go into the hunt if elk hunting, right? Prepare yourself physically. Prepare yourself, you know, with your ability to shoot your bow. Yep. Prepare yourself mentally. Yep. But along with that mental preparation, you should include in that, yep. prepare myself for what happens when a situation arises, because it will, where I'm going to run into another hunter. Mm -hmm. How am I going to handle myself? How am I going to handle myself if they are not what I'm, I'm not a confront. You guys know I'm not a confrontational person. Oh no, you're a real piece all. of work. And it really, yeah. <laughs> and it terrifies me. Like, I don't like confrontation. Um, But you have to prepare yourself like, hey, if because that's a real possibility. Oh, 100%. You know, I've had guys just jump in the middle of me in, 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 in other states, like where it's like. Yep. And not care. That was you. I saw you tagged. You're from Colorado. You got all the elk you want. What, you know, and just gone off. How dare you come across exactly. state lines exactly. and hunt our bulls? Exactly. You got enough back yeah. there. Why and don't I you, have, why don't you, use his people, own you go back to your people yep. over there. Yours is over the counter. And you've got the largest elk population in the whole yeah. country. What are you and here you are on a second day. What are you going to do with two bulls? And you probably already, I mean, I've, I've been read the riot act. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so you have to prepare yourself because then you leave that situation and something like that, especially, it can take a dream it rattles hunt. You. It does. And it can take a dream hunt. Turn into a nightmare. And, and all of a sudden you're like, you know, I left where I'm like shaking. Yeah, it makes you not want to be there anymore. Yeah. I don't want to be there. I wonder if I'm going to run into this guy again. I wonder yeah. if he's going to do something to my truck. I wonder, I wonder, yeah. I wonder. And pretty soon the joy of everything that you have. And if this is like your maiden voyage west and you're, yeah. you've got this expectation, yeah. make sure you have that in your mind that that is a true and real possibility. Sadly, that's a possibility. Hopefully you meet someone that is the opposite end of the spectrum because oh, then, very, yeah, very. yeah, you meet, you meet the guy that's or like, man, that's your new, your new best friend, yeah. mate. It's like your wife, your, your future wife. I always tell my son, you know, like, don't get too hung up. Your future wife, you probably don't even know her yet, buddy. Right. So don't get too hung up on these high school relationships, you know? And it's like your best friend that you might have in your life, you, you, you might meet him on the mountain, you know, yep. some of my very best friends, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I, met, I mean, one of my very best friends, Grafton Singer. I mean, he, he, we met happen chance antelope hunting. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I like, you know, something that you touched on was something similar that you had touched on with your article. I think it was your other buddy, Darren, or, or the guy who talked about how to choose your spots and stuff. Martin. Martin. Chagnovich. Yep. Martin Chagnovich. He was and in a very, he, he, he very talked, weird but, spot two, two years ago. But, but he talked about what you were saying, like, if you're going to go to a certain area, like let, let's say you're going to an OTC area, your mm -hmm. unit here in Colorado, mm -hmm. like you have to ask yourself questions like how many people are going to be hunting this unit? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to run into other people? Like, like he said, hikers, horseback riders, 
Um, you know, what's the quality of the trophy that I can expect in that yeah. unit? You have to you have to go in clear eyed. And if basically like what Martin was saying is if you don't like the answers to the questions, mm -hmm. then you go find a different place. Mm -hmm. Or maybe wait a few mm -hmm. more years until yeah. you could draw a unit where you're going to see fewer yeah. people. And in other words, don't don't like go into a situation and be like, well, that was horrible. When the only reason it was horrible is because you were ignorant mm -hmm. of, of the reality that you were going into. Well, that's not on everyone else who was there. That's true. That's on you because yeah. you bought a license and just went off thinking it was going to be, you know, unicorns and rainbows. Mm -hmm. And it turned out it was like hand to hand combat in there trying to get mm -hmm. an animal. Right. You know, right. Well, and so many people get caught up on, you know, like Go Hunt, for example. I love Go Hunt. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm on yeah. it probably every day. Yeah. During my seminars this year, I talked about Go Hunt a lot. What I love about it, but the one thing I hate about it, and it's because I don't hate it that Go Hunt provides it, but I hate how people look at it is trophy, potential, and quality. <laughs> Everybody gets hung up on, oh, but this unit, it says there's 380 inch bulls. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was or is bulls of that caliber there, but we're talking Dude. maybe three or four on yeah. the entire unit now. Yeah. Is the potential there? Are the genetics there? Yes. But if you're a guy that's never elk hunted, and I, I run into this all the time, man, that's a good unit. Let me ask you, why are you going there? Oh, trophy potential's 380. I'm, I'm not shooting nothing if it's not 360. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, how and many I'm times like, have you heard that? I'm, I'm not like, shooting you anything below until about the second day. And, and I'm like, <laughs> man, you ever huh? killed a bull? Never elk hunted. And you're looking for a 360. I'm like, I've been out cutting for 12 years. You put a 320 in front of me. I was like, let's go. Here we if go. you haven't seen him on the hoof and 280 walks out, you're going to be like, oh, it's a monster, it's a monster, yeah. it's a monster. Yeah. Because of their body size and the, you know, yeah. and the three, 300 inch bull is oh, a big bull. Stud. Big bull. But, but, you know, people that have never went on these hunts, never even seen a real bull in life. Yeah. And they get caught up on trophy potential. And then you jump on Instagram and, well, my buddy or this mm -hmm. guy, he only shoots 350s and he, and then you start doing this compare and contrast mm -hmm. thing on public. It's like, just shoot what would make you happy. And if, if your heart races and you're excited, I don't care if it's a 210 bull yeah. or it's a 390 bull, if you're gonna be happy with it, yeah. shoot the dang on thing and be yeah. proud of it. But don't, don't fall into this what, tr trophy quality, trophy quality. I'm like, man, I get it. Th th there's the potential, you know, I love to hunt the Gila. I've killed two bulls in the Gila. I love those units in New Mexico. But there are spots where you could spend eight days and not see an elk. Sure. And it's one of the most world-renowned 400-inch spots yeah. for bulls there is. There, I yep. mean, look at your world records. Mm -hmm. How many have come from New Mexico mm -hmm. and the Gila Mountain? You think I'm going in there and only going to look for a 400? Yeah, no way. Both bulls I've killed? 310, 315, and yeah. I was stoked. Yeah, well, you, and you and stoked. rightly so. Those are big bulls. Understandably, I mean, they're not Christian bird bulls, but <laughs> my I've, I've, hey, yeah, I've only ever killed two, and they're both in that 310 to 315. Which is, yeah, which is now, now, this year, you're looking for a mega 410 or 410 This plus. is a year. Montana, baby. See? But that's not public land, so we're not talking about it today. But if it was public, you would bump it from 400 well, down to 390 because you're realistic. <laughs> well, I'm, in, in all reality. But right? learning. So from what Jason Clint told me, I need to bump it down. My expectation is a little different because it is going to be a private land. Hunt. And, and it should, and it should and, be. And, and, it should and it's going to be my third time hunting well, yeah, this area. You've got knowledge. I know the land. Yep. I Less know what, what kind of bulls are there. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and on, and a hunt, on a hunt like that, you should. Man, oh man, yeah. yes, by all means. It, if a 320 walks out and you're like, gosh, that's just not really what I want, yeah, more power to you. But yeah. if yeah, but if you but pass, on public, if you pass the 320 where he hunts elk on public land here, you'd be oh, a fool. You'd I've never a, hunted. Yeah. I will. I will pass a legal bull in Colorado. In, in an OTC unit, when I see a legal bull in Colorado, and I tell people that all the time, if you're coming out west, and because the thing about elk hunting, and I'm not trying to discourage anyone. It, right at all. Oh, right. Oh, this is a great. Is well, Colorado it is a nice. great place to come get experience. It is absolutely. But people see the same thing. Clint talked about like with the trophy potential in places. People see you have over three hundred thousand elk strong population, and Colorado is very good about putting that out there. Well, you know, they, great marketing yeah, strategy. It is. It is. It is. Right. Let's face it, it. Let's face it. It's a your your Colorado Parks and Wildlife Department loves to take sure money no. from Pennsylvania hey, guys man. like me who want to come. Ohio, Ohio. Right. They take a lot of money from me every year. <laughs> and, and I live here. They take a lot of money from me. But 
the thing to understand is when you come to do that, a lot of people just dream of an elk hunt, right? Like yeah. that's that some of people will, oh, will once in a lifetime to just to come and not and to hunt public land in Colorado. Yeah. But they're having those real, realistic expectations of what because I'll tell you what, for me personally, I don't know about you. I mean, I don't know about you guys. And, and you've you've hunted public too for elk in Colorado. For me, 90% of elk hunting is a complete and total suffer fest. And it is a disaster. And second level it's, fun at its finest. It is. It's a lot of bow hiking. It's a lot of it's hiking. It's That's a lot I, of taking your uh, your favorite bow, bow and going. Just you and me, sweetheart, today. Oh, like, <laughs> wow, my, my buddy Roy Lee, I mean, he come from Kentucky and he he would always say that. I was like, man, he's like, we're gonna bow hike again today. Yep. I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna bow hike again today. Because and just but but having that in your mind, because it is it will be what you make it. Mm -hmm. It will be what you make it. I mean, even even this hunt, like right here, like I fully expected this. I mean, we hunted public land turkeys yesterday, mm -hmm. and right now, I fully expected we're at day two. And I expected one bird already, if not for you guys to be done. We're letting Jace down. But no, I, the, but here's the thing. That bird yesterday would have had a little we, longer beard. Bird would have killed him on public. If he wasn't such a sissy we bird, were, these birds are sissies. We were trying to sissies. talk. And we've had two birds like look at, look at our- And I know we're not talking about two. Like, yeah, I'm just using it. I'm using it as, an, as, as just, you know, but we've had a ton of fun. Yeah. Like we've had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs and, and Spin, hanging out. You know, and, spinning this- into turkeys real quick. Any full fan bird, yeah, is a shooter. Yeah, for me here. Yeah, if it is a tom with a full fan and he struts, yeah, I don't care if that beard is beard rotted three inches. Yep, or is a mega like what Christian's looking for and just a jumbo. sixteen hey, inch jumbo, jumbo paint beard. You could just uh, he's that's a great jumbo, too. What's wrong? Are you gonna J are you pre Jake sh shaming me? No, because there's, 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 there's some jakes. There's eight jakes in that And I'm really room. good at talking I, people into I things. Said, I told him last me, night. I said, for me, if <laughs> oh, it's for got you. a cool fan. <laughs> for you. I don't care what the but, beard but is. But will you think less of me if I shoot a jake this afternoon? I'm just happy we talked you out of shooting that hen. That's not even legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to get it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's, if you shoot a Jake, I'm going to be like, there's a high yeah. ball. I'm not going to lie. There's a if you shot a Jake, I, I would be excited. You know, yeah. I think it's fun to shoot Jake. Going from the, the, I shoot a lot of Jakes. Going from this turkey <laughs> to the elk thing, it's the same for me. Like most places I hunt, it's over the counter mm -hmm. or it's one point mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. I love elk. Absolutely. Yeah. Probably yeah. take elk over all over anything, and that's including beef. And I raise hundreds of those. Yep. Um, you put a decent bull in front of me on pretty much anywhere I hunt. Mm -hmm. Now this year in Colorado, I burnt five points. I, I can't can't relay and where I I'm going. Nine, so we talked in, about that. in this unit where I'm going. Different I'm going to look for yes a, a dang good six point in my mind. That's three yep. ten, three twenty plus. That's what I'm going to look for. Me too. That's what, what I'll tell you right now on the very last day. If that just a solid six point comes by, <laughs> he's going to get smacked because I love elk meat. And in the back of my mind, I'd be okay with that. But I am going to spend most of my hunt looking for something a little bigger than what I normally would because mm -hmm. I'm burning five points. Mm -hmm. Utah, when I hunt there, it's an over the counter deal. Walmart in Utah loves to take my $619.92 every year. You put a spike in front of me in that unit? Yeah. Because I'm hunting with 6,000 other guys that are doing the same thing as me. Watch how quick I let the lungs, uh, the air out of the lungs of that guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just because it's, it's I know realistically what I'm up against. If sure. you even find elk well, in that unit, you are way ahead of 92% of the rest of the population of hunters because most guys don't even see the amount of guys I run into that spend six seven eight nine days and they live they live there mm -hmm. live in salt lake they live mm -hmm. right there i haven't seen an elk in five days yeah i've been up here nine times i've heard one bugle i've mm -hmm. seen one bull and two cows and i'm thinking oh i'm doing good i'm on day three and i've already seen five bulls i'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing good yeah now none of them were big bulls but you see, they were bulls legal how to kill everyone legal bulls well let's let's close this mm -hmm. show with a bonus segment okay Ooh. And, and I'm gonna give a Ooh. I'm giving a free sponsorship. Ooh. Like so what's behind door number two? It's a bonus. Ooh. It's a bonus segment. We have a six arrow quiver, but Berg's putting a seventh arrow in it. I like this. A, I like this. A bonus, a bonus. A bonus segment brought to you by Ghost Energy Drink. Oh.
ooh. my favorites. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh we we had all ooh. Ooh. Because if it wasn't, I'll tell you we what, had I was against yesterday. And you I have to take a little bit of credit against for this. It from the Jason was like, I'm a Red Bull man. Get me a I Red Bull. I have to take a little bit of credit. I, I introduced these guys to the <sighs> ghost game. I'm an energy drink guy. Now, most of the time, I'm usually pretty calm, collected. I don't get excited about things, as most of you know. <laughs> the, the ghost energy drinks really bring it out in me. You know, Dude. they just do. Boom, boom, ghost. And what ghost. it is 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 it's it's man. I'm just uh, I'm I'm the raspberry. They have a they have. That's what I got. Blue raspberry. Well, yeah. Well, that's yeah, what the raspberry. sour patch kids. Yep. So the sour patch kids, blue raspberry, twice. <sighs> so me. We're getting you one today. Oh, are you though? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a good one. So kids, get yourself some ghosts. But okay. Seriously, bonus, yeah. why, I, won't, I mentioned, I teased it at the beginning, mm -hmm. let's not take too long, but, mm -hmm. um, so we talked about how like when, you, when you're when you hunting public land, especially if you're in an over-the-counter area, mm -hmm. so, you know, some states and species are basically over-the-counter for anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like, a um, lot of opportunity out there. So, you know, there are ways without having a bunch of points, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without being in like a quote, trophy management unit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to still oh, yeah. find areas that you can hunt where you may experience less pressure, Absolutely. have a little bit more opportunity. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways to do that, and I've taken advantage of this in Montana, um, there's lots of other states that do it. And Jace has an article that we're calling uh, when the when the public goes private. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's there's all these programs, like I mentioned Montana, they have mm -hmm. The block management program. There are similar programs. You got to pick up a copy uh, of the mm -hmm. magazine because Jace gives you all the information. Kansas has the Weehaw. Yeah, but but but, but there Nebraska are has some great stuff. Oh yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of I hunt stuff. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of I killed my bird off that this year. There you go. Private land that's available, and some of it, like it, again, I'm I'm just going to speak to Montana because I'm familiar. Mm -hmm. Some of them. You have to sign in. You do. Just, not just sign in. Some of them just have boxes where you fill out the card right. and drop it and yep. you can go. Some, are online. Some of them require you to make a reservation. Oh, yeah. So let's say there's a given ranch. It might yep. be 20,000 acres. Yep. They may only take two or three parties mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. So That's good. you're yep. going to be limited. And, and a party. Spirit. You had to sign in online. Yeah. 100. Six o'clock every night. First guy that signs okay. in, you got it the next so day. So taking advantage of those right there. I mean, yeah, yep. that's that's. So what do you think I was doing at five fifty nine? Come, come on, come on, come on. Just like applying for a left or a, a trying to get one uh, a left oh, on line Colorado for the for like the leftover so, draw. The fastest. So, yep. so just to give an example, like I know you said in your article, like you know you think it's too good to be true, but it's not. And actually, so a, lot a lot of these of properties. Stuff don't see a lot of hunting pressure. No. Well, I'll give you one example and then I'll let you talk. Two years ago, I killed a nice whitetail buck on a, a, a block management ranch in Montana. Mm -hmm. And I, it was one of those ones where you had to register. So I had to contact the ranch owner and I had to stop at his house when I got there. And he actually fills out a, a slip. And then I, you have that and you can hunt there for like three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maximum. So you can't right. monopolize the property. Then you have to take a day off and then you could come mm -hmm. back. So anyway, long story short, he had only had, I was there at the end of September last week. So the season had been open all month. He had only had two other groups the whole month basically use the block management unit. Right. So I, I got right into deer and I killed a nice buck on, yeah. uh, on the third morning. Um, and it was awesome hunt and I loved it. And and so that's the kind of stuff that's out there and people just have to do a little research. And I think that's the thing. I mean, like um, it, state game and fish, you know, they, it, it, wherever you are, they, they see it too. They see an influx of oh, yeah. public land hunters. They see, and then they see an opportunity to make oh. more money. It's a business. I mean, I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not, but it's what I hot, like about hot it, market right it's now. a hot market. And what I like about it though, is they're being proactive Yep. And Can they're partnering with, with private landowners. And I think a lot of people do think that like, it's too, it's really too good to be true. This program isn't for real. I'm going to X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Well, like not, I mean, I know this is a bow hunting big game, but like in Colorado, what's really cool too, is my son really likes to waterfowl hunt. So when we have to leave here and go to my in-laws in Grand Junction, it's hard for him during that Christmas time because he wants to hunt and we hunts here. He's, he's, he's gone and he, he can go hunting. Up there, though, it's like you're not getting on without a lease. But 
you go on and you reserve a blind mm -hmm. along the Colorado River, you can reserve that blind. Mm -hmm. And we've never had, it's crazy. Yeah, It's crazy. So those opportunities are out there. And like, I, I mean, I think any, any of that is worth absolutely taking the time to look into. And one thing for me that I've especially noticed is, you know, a lot of these spots, um, this area that I live in is a great example because this area, when I was a kid, there was not a stitch of public property. Mm. And there is lots now of walk-in access mm -hmm. areas here. And I, I deer hunt them regularly. I turkey hunt them regularly. I, I and I very rarely run into someone mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's just that's that, that like, well, it's, you know, or, or it's a real small chunk yeah. of ground, you know, real ch small chunk of ground. Great. If it looks awesome though, you might want to go check that out because yeah. all it takes is an animal to walk through it and you'd yep. be there or, well, and I know it's crazy. I know, um, you know, I'm a big white tail guy, right? Yeah. Being from the East and, and I'll go just for fun. I bet you guys do the same thing. A lot of our, our listeners do the same thing at night when you're watching TV with your wife or whatever, mm -hmm. I usually have my phone in my hand mm -hmm. and I'll be like on Onyx mm -hmm. and I'm just looking at walking areas like in Kansas and zooming in on these little, like you talk about these yeah. small tracks along the river it might only be like a hundred acres, but know. it, but it's along that river corridor. And I'm like, you just dream. You're like, man, I bet you if I'd go right along the river there in that tree in first week in November yeah, yeah. and just went Jumped in that, that tree <laughs> and waited bucks from this side of the river, this side of the river are going to walk past me and you could, it, it, they would, they would. Yeah. And, and they you will. know, I don't have time to visit most of those in a lifetime, you know what I mean? And take a chance on it. I mean, just take, take a shot, you know, and yeah. that's, that's my thing on that. One thing I just, for me, and then I'll shut up because then you guys can close out. But one thing I do want to recommend is some of my best private land permission that I have in other places has come from good public land etiquette. Yep. Meaning I met somebody on the mountain yep. and befriended them. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, that night when I invited them to my camp and we're splitting a mountain house meal mm -hmm. and make, making them coffee on the jet boil and things like that. And it's their first. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, they own land in China. They own land in Wyoming. Yeah. They own land in, you know, yeah. Oklahoma or wherever I've had several yeah. and they're like, Hey, yep. you should, you should come out and hunt my place. Yep. And it's like, yeah, well tomorrow, why don't we just go elk hunt together? I'll show you, I'll show you some things. I'll, I'll show you what I know, which is not much, but Hey, and then pretty soon it's like, I've got some of my best private land spots have come from good public land etiquette. Came back full circle. That's a yeah. great, that's a great lesson. And, and the other thing I wanted to mention before we close is, because we've been talking a lot about the West, mm -hmm. but Jace's Oracle, it's not just the West. Like no. he, he has Florida in yeah. there, Illinois, yeah. Yeah. Um, public land anywhere. It, yeah, and for oh, a yeah, Western guy, this is my this is my the whitetail is my that's my that's my new drug of choice, you know. That's that's like we've All talked there. about that. I I just I they've gotten in my brain and and and, and I they're really neat. love them and they're neat. I think they're awesome, and so you know. Yep, absolutely. So, hey, you know, it, good episode, guys. I mean, there's a lot, a lot there. I hope that everyone who, you know, has taken the time to listen to this, that you are, you're never going to be one of those guys in a fist fight on the side of the mountain. No. You know, please be, please be somebody that you would want to meet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. You know, be the guy that you want to run into mm -hmm. on the side of the mountain, you know? Yep. Absolutely. And, and blue uh, raspberry or the warhead ghost energy drinks. Go try one. You'll thank me, us. Well, not even just me, but thank us later. Hey, uh, let's when, let's call the, I bet you there's an 800 number on the can. Let's just tell them. Let's we're just on a podcast. call. Let's just call ghost sponsor. today and be like, Hey, this is, you're kind this of is new, Clint Casper. <laughs> this is Clint Casper. And I've got an opportunity for you today. I really you do. Know, have you ever heard of the ball hunting podcast? How about once we get sponsored by Ghost, we will give back to you guys by giving you a discount code that's PB2022, and then you can order PB cases, cases of, of Ghost, Ghost, and it'll be you 15% off. So this is going to come back full circle. Cases. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. We've got turkeys to kill. We've got to go. We've got to go. We gotta get ready. I'm getting Get out there and kill yeah. some turkey. So thanks for listening, everybody, and good luck out there, and be good. Yep.
Boom. Look at that. That was a good podcast. It was a great podcast. Thanks for downloading the Peterson's Bow Hunting Podcast. All bow hunting, all the time. Pick up the latest issue of Peterson's Bow Hunting Magazine on your local newsstand or connect with us online at bowhuntingmag.com.